Hello. Today a little bit about tapes that can damage themselves or damage your machine if they're not handled properly. And also uh, a tape that says it can damage itself. OK, let's find out what this is all about. Right, these are the tapes I'm going to be talking about. Uh, this one is uh, a bit of an aside. We'll come to that later. Let's look at these tapes that can uh, suffer from damage. So we have mini DV and a closely related DV cam. There are also other tapes of the same size, such as DVC Pro and a standard video 8 tape. And you might think there's really very little to connect these tapes, especially these two. But there is, because the design of them is actually very similar. So let's start with video 8, which came first. So anybody who's ever done anything with video will be uh, used to these because they were by far and away the most popular camcorder format uh, through the late 80s all the way through the 90s. Uh, much more popular than the VHS-C format. And uh, generally they work very well. Uh, they certainly uh, stood the test of time better than VHS-C. Uh, they tend to play better, uh, give better results now. The way this works is when it's put into the player, uh, there's a spring-loaded catch here, and uh, a metal prong on the catch, on the, on the uh, camcorder catches that, at the same time as it's going in and allows this front door to open, swing back out the way, then the tape can go in and this can be pulled around the heads by the loading mechanism. But uh, something can happen and there's sometimes a reason for it. This particular tape is very badly designed. It has a place for a label right in front of where this mechanism opens. And that's fine if the customer treats it properly. But if the customer is a bit sloppy and maybe uh, sticks the label sort of there, there's a hazard that this will not ride over the top. Or worse still, the customer sticks it there because the customer didn't realise his door is relevant. Now you've got a problem that won't open at all. And this can be very damaging. So on some camcorders, if you put that into a camcorder, it'll just jam and it won't go anywhere. Uh, but uh, some bigger decks, mains machines, can get a bit messed up because they get into a position where they're sort of half open, half closed, and it can jam the front loading mechanism. And something else can happen. And you see that sort of thing, right? It's, it's a mess now. But there's a very common effect that can be caused now either by labels or by mishandling of the tape. You might say, well, you know, this is quite nice, this. It's made out of... Uh, several components. There's the, the door here uh, which protects the tape uh, on the front side and then an inner door that protects the tape on the back side, you see, that steps out of the way when the uh, tape is opened. And the way that works is it's uh, connected, the, the two doors are connected uh, and the angles are achieved by having the uh, inner door there running in little tracks in the side of the tape. So there are two small tracks which guide spigots on the uh, ends of the inner door and give it that nice opening operation. But what can happen due to mishandling or labels is that the uh, door pops out of the tracks so uh, I'll show you what can happen. It can happen on one side or both. So you get into the situation where it's popped out of its proper position on that track. It happens all the time, and yet I can't demonstrate it. There's a very good reason I'm struggling to demonstrate it on this particular tape. On this tape, it must be a later model, the track is set into the plastic I don't know if you can see that. I'll zoom you in a little bit. So on this tape, the track is set into the plastic. So if the guide was to pop out of that track, it's got nowhere to go but back into the guide, into that channel. But on some tapes, this has just a wall here, and it can get on the wrong side of it. Let's see if we can find a tape that'll do that. Looking at this Fuji branded tape, it's not such a clever design because there's actually uh, a space on the other side of the track into which the guide can get itself. 
so it's not all filled in here. So what will happen is the guide can pop onto that side of the track. So I'll get a tape in. I'll get a tape in that looks like this. A bit sort of bunged up at the front. And you think, what's going on there? So what's happened then is that one or both of these followers have popped out of the track to the front. Now, several bad things about that. Of course, if you put that in a machine or you try to put it into a machine, if you force it into a machine, it's going to jam the mechanism. And the other thing is, of course, the tape is getting all chewed up in the doorway. So that's bad news uh, for both the tape and the machine. And it's not unknown for me to have to do this, pop the guides back into the tracks before I can run the tape. And sometimes I have to uh, splice the tape to repair it. Now that tape is repaired and that's good to go apart from a bit of damage on the tape itself. So a similar thing can happen with Mini DV because it has very much the same design here for the uh, doors. But what can happen, of course, if somebody's put a label there, you're asking for it. Now, one of the uh, particularly uh, unfortunate things can happen is certain uh, Mini DV or DV machines, such as a Sony DSR11, if you put that into a DSR11 now with that label in the wrong place, it can jam in such a way that it gets stuck in the machine and the machine's unable to return it. It'll kind of go halfway down and the machine will just go to clicking and it'll never eject. However many times you ask it to eject, it won't. And on occasion, I've had to take the deck out of a DSR11 and connect voltage to the eject uh, mechanism to be able to wind the tape back out of its uh, mechanism. So it's seriously bad news if people put, put labels in the wrong place on Video 8 and Mini DV, especially Mini DV. So the same thing can happen that it can jump off those tracks. And if you look at this tape again, you see it's got the same sort of design flaw. I'll zoom you in a bit. It has the same design flaw there that there's a space here above the track into which the guide can go. So let's just demonstrate that again on this different format. The same thing can happen. There it's happened on one side in this case. So you can get a tape that at first glance looks at first glance, that tape looks okay. It's not too too all out of the place, but a closer examination shows you something's wrong. And typically I'd look at that and say, oh, well, the guide's popped out, in this case, on one side. And it can happen, of course, on both sides. So same trick. You have to pop it back into its guide. And also, of course, there's just as much risk of tape damage, this one has got away with it, but sometimes the tape will get damaged as a result of that. Now in theory, the same thing could happen here. We have a, a DV cam tape. The same could happen, though in practice I find it doesn't tend to, uh, possibly because the extra length of the tape makes the whole assembly more rigid, it doesn't do that twisting. Also because these are used in generally in professional equipment and get handled better. Now you might say, well, what can I do if it's all completely mangled up at the front here? Can I play the tape with these doors completely removed? And the answer is uh, sometimes. So something like a, a Video 8 tape. If I get, if I had a Video 8 tape where there's just huge amounts of damage to this front door, uh, you can actually just physically rip it off and it will play in most equipment. So, for example, you could play that on a Digital 8 camcorder and it would be okay. Of course, it would be bad state of affairs in terms of storage, but if you just want to play it once, it'll work. But if you try to load that into something like an EVS 9000 or one of the other professional machines, uh, it's going to uh, jam on the way in without having the door in place. It won't accept it in the front loading mechanism. 
And the same applies here. If you were to rip the front off this, you might be able to play it in some mini DV camcorders, but not all. And you probably won't be able to play it in a professional machine uh, such as a DSL 11 DV cam deck. Now this is a VHS tape. Uh, there was this outfit that would do these things where you could get your child to sort of appear in this video. And I wanted to mention here the uh, warning they have. Now, you could have an argument about the legality of copying something like this to a digital. Uh, they say you're not allowed to, but on the other hand, uh, you would consider it to be naturally only fair that you could take a digital copy of an analog tape that you own. And indeed, uh, there was uh, laws being introduced into the UK to allow us to take one digital copy of uh, something you've paid for. Uh, and also, for, of course, to be able to listen to your own CDs on an MP3 player. But those laws, uh, those changes never went into law. And we were relying on EU copyright law, which sort of helped a little bit and then with Brexit all that's gone so now we don't have a working copyright law in the UK at all all we have is a law that's so preposterous that it's widely flouted and can't be enforced so for example it is actually illegal to use an mp3 player with your cds on it I mean that's just a nonsense so we won't go into too much detail about copyright but suffice to say this has a copy guard thing which is very similar in operation to macrovision which is quite commonly known but look at the warnings and it has it on screen as well i'll show you that in a moment any attempt to copy it may render this tape useless now let's just have a quick think about that how could this tape know that it's being played in a machine which is connected to a digital capture system. Let's just have a little think about how could you technically make such a device. I would say that uh, any attempt to copy it may render this tape useless is very close to being a downright lie it depends on what you say by may. It may be rendered useless because your machine breaks down, I suppose, by some chance. It might happen. So you could say that may is just about possible. Theoretically possible that by some coincidence your machine happened to break down when you were copying it to another format. Yeah, maybe. But really, that is as good as a complete lie, as good as anything that our great leader Boris could say. So they really uh, should not have written this. It lowers the uh, credibility of any company that says such a claim. Well, I hope you've learned a little bit from this and seen some of the things that can damage both tape and machine and uh, those that can't. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.